You know, it's been a busy couple of months in the city of Midland. We've had some buildings demolished. We've had a visit from a former president on his way home. All drawing a lot of attention to the city, and that's the whole idea behind our uh, event today, is to get a state of the city uh, under Mayor Wes Perry. He is in his second year as mayor. He has an engineering degree from the University of Oklahoma. He has been an independent in the oil and gas business for 30 years. Born and raised in Midland, he has three children, two grandchildren, and two more on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the mayor of the city of Midland, Wes Perry. Yeah, my uh, partner just said that's two more grandchildren, not two more children. So uh, I don't think we can handle that, but uh, thank you very much, Jay. Um, thank each one, of your, each one of you for being here. It um, does my heart good to see you here, and, and I'm hoping that you will leave this room with a better understanding of where we stand today. But what I hope is more important than that is that we have um, we get some feedback from you as to what issues that you want us to look at, and, and I hope that we'll get some uh, feedback later in the in the uh, day. I want to start off with our city council. We have our city council members here. I see Michael. I know Jerry's here. I'm not sure who else. If you guys would stand up. Oh, there's John James. Thank you, please. Uh, there's Luann, and then Vicky. I know she's here too. I don't. Yep. You need to be standing. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I apologize. And and I want to point out these are the these folks we get to work with every day, and it's a it's a great honor to serve beside them. We have a great relationship. We don't always think exactly the same way, which is a perfect a perfect way that a city council ought to work. We ought to uh, respect each other and our decisions. And at the end of the day, try to do what's best for our community. So I do appreciate very much your your helping and working together. Um, Let's see, the, the um, city staff that are here, if you guys would just stand up real quickly, if you don't mind. We have police officers and fire. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, anyone that works for the city, <clears throat> it's real easy to stand up here and take, well, take it. I, and I want to take the bad up here, but the good needs to go to those folks because they truly make this community work. And as I've served, in this will be my eighth year as I've served and, and know more and more of our staff. I haven't met all 900 employees, but I've met a lot. But I can tell you, everyone I've met have been a, um, they're, they're great servants to our community and everything that happens good is uh, for there. Everything that happens bad is, you know, the city council's fault. So I'll be happy to take that. Um, and then the, the last person is uh, Tina Jowles. She's the one that put together this event and I don't see her right now and Leanne. Uh, Brooks is helping her, and there was a group of volunteers. Yeah, she's having some to eat. But she put together this um, annual report, and I really encourage you to uh, read it, pull it out, take it home. There are some great facts in here, and the, and the most important thing about it is it's very unique and different. Typically, annual reports are magazines or little booklets, and uh, Tina stepped out a little bit, and the city manager was involved, and so we uh, have something new, and it's really, I'm, I'm impressed, and, and really I'm not a creative person, but I'm, I'm proud to get to work with people that are. Uh, our last uh, person I want to, well, there are two people I want, want to stand up, our uh, police chief and our city manager, Courtney Sharp. Police chief uh, Price Robinson and Courtney Sharp. There he is. <clears throat> These are folks that we hired last year and very, very thankful they're here. I can tell you that, that they will carry us a long time in the future and we're just uh, blessed to have them. It's Courtney's birthday, so if uh, anyone wants to wish him a happy birthday, please do. If, t if you have a birthday gift for him, he'd be happy to take it. So, No, that came from me, not from Courtney. But um, I want to tell you a little bit about how we're going to do this today. I'll take a few minutes and hopefully hit some high points. I want to keep this portion of it as short as possible so you can get a a quick overview, if you will, of our city and where we stand. And then I want to have a, a long time, as long as we can uh, stand it, I suppose, to have some questions and comments from you. That's, that's the most important part of this, of this. But I want to set the stage a little bit by giving you some, uh, some perspective of where we are, and hopefully that'll spur on more things that you want to talk about, and I'll be happy to, to do those. My um, belief is, and, and I think this is all the council, I, I don't ask this specific question, but I know in our discussions we have this. I think our main job as a city council is to be a good steward. It's to, it's to represent you well, to be uh, 
to be efficient, if you will, for our government. I think everybody wants to have the services. Nobody wants to ever cut services. So the question is, are we delivering those services at the, at the best price? Sometimes we are and sometimes we aren't. But I think as a, as a person in our chair, that's our job, is to make sure we are as efficient as we can be. So that, that's overriding everything that we do. And, and I speak for myself as well as the city council. We do not want to waste money. And, and I don't know that we do. We try not to, we say we won't. I, I can't say guarantee you that, that we don't, but that's the goal. And we have a staff that thinks that way, and so we constantly are talking about it. We want to be good stewards with your money. It, it's not our money. It's yours. And we recognize that. And, and if, um, if we ever lose sight of that, if I lose sight of that, you need to get me out of here because that's the, that's the thing that I've got to do is represent you and be a good steward. Our uh, motto for the past year has been back to the basics, and the council has been very – uh, strong on that issue and, and we've done a lot of things that are, are unprecedented actually. We've, we've never done uh, these items. I'm going to hit them as quickly as I can but, but they're significant and I don't want you to, to, to miss this that we've never done these things and obviously we've had some some good sales tax numbers and some things like that so we were able to knock out some capital projects that have been waiting around for a while and we were blessed to have some good economic times and so we did it. We are going to pave every street in Midland, Texas. That's, that's the first. We are, it may take us a few years, obviously, with up and down economy, you can't do everything you want to do, but that's a goal of this city council, and I hope it continues as, as long as we get, as, in, until we get all those streets paved. It's never been a priority. That, that's something we've done that's new. We are, um, we are uh, repairing a drainage channel, and, and I know this doesn't sound real exciting to you, that this this one is about a four million dollar project so it, it's significant in the fact that it's something that we've got to do as a community but no one maybe we haven't had the financial resources to be able to do it but we're tackling that one and and it'll take again a long time to fix all of our drainage channels but we're going to start that this year and and um we've, we've got it funded and ready to go so it's it's a again it's not real sexy it's not real exciting but it's absolutely imperative that we build our infrastructure at this time the um the thing that we've also done, we spent $900,000 on a system for our uh, safety, our, our um, police and fire department. And it's important because as a council, they, they, we look to them to give us ideas of what they need to do their jobs better. They wanna, we want to provide the resources, the money, the equipment. That was something that they asked for. It'll keep them safer. It'll make them more efficient. So the council funded that, and we, we were able to provide that for the police and fire department. It's, it should be a, uh, something that does increase efficiency, but at the same time keeps them safer. We are rebuilding La Mesa Road, and again, that uh, doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's $4 million. It's, it's an expensive project, and it takes a real commitment to do something like that. Uh, we are also realigning, if you will, uh, Garfield and... Cotton Flat Road, so there'll be a connection from the interstate to the hospital, and it's a it's a major project. The city is putting up three million dollars. The rest of it's going to come from the state, from TxDOT. So it's something that we've needed to do for a while. It it has a lot of impact for our community because it'll become a gateway. It will allow more access to our hospital or easier access to our hospital, which is a it's it's a big need in our community. So that's something that we're participating in again. It's not real exciting. But it's critical if we're going to go on for 25 and 50 years to, to build the types of things we need to build in our community. The last one is this traffic system. And it's, been, it's going to come out in the next couple of weeks in a big way. But this is an a advanced traffic system, management system. And it's something that no other community in the, in the world actually has. We're, we've got the best. And it is a, a reflection. Well, what it'll do, it will allow us to get to work quicker you won't have to stop, you won't waste gasoline stopping, and so it, it'll save you time and money. And this was something that was funded by council previous, but it's something we're, we're working on and, and it should be in place. It is a big deal. And I wanna make it clear, you'll have to still stop occasionally, just not so much. <laughs> if you, <laughs> yeah, it's been a question. Everybody thinks, well, gosh, I will never stop at a stoplight again. Um, but if you drive 80 on a, on a, on a uh, 30 mile an hour zone, you'll get stopped, I promise you. And it may not be by the traffic light, it may be uh, by a police officer, but it's, the point is you need to drive under the speed limit to make that deal work. So we'll be talking about that more. It'll take some months to get it going, but we're, we're real excited about it. It's a, it's a big deal. The, um, 
The uh, things I want to hit quickly are our challenges, and we can. I really could spend probably an hour on each one of these ideas, but I want to hit them quick, and then if people want to go into more detail, I'd, I'd sure appreciate your questions. The first one I want to talk about is budget. That, that encompasses a lot of issues, but I want to start with taxes, and that's the that's the number one question I get: is what are, what are we going to do with our taxes? Typically, we have used our sales taxes for capital items, things that are one-time expenses, not ongoing operational things. Uh, property taxes are not. They're typically for operations, and I can't say hard and fast rule, that's the way it works, but we recognize that property taxes are a little bit more stable than sales taxes or any other thing, so, so we try to budget those capital items in that realm, so, so they're in that sales tax. So we're going, okay, what are we going to do this year? We're seeing property values staying about the same. They haven't really changed, although we think it's possible they could go down. Sales taxes at this point haven't gone down yet, but we think that's going to happen. And, and the overall opinion, uh, goal, I don't know what you call it, but, the, but what I think about is let's plan for the worst and hope for the best. So let's plan it, go on it going down and budget that way. And if, we're, and if that doesn't occur, then obviously we'll, we can... Um, you know, save some money in our savings account. We've got a great, right now, current um, savings account. It's our, our uh, uh, just a fund basically to cover in the event that we, we need things. It's in great shape. We were able to add quite a bit last year because of our sales tax, plus do all those capital items I, I suggested or talked about earlier. So we're in good shape there. It's just a matter of making sure that if our sales taxes go down or when they go down, we'll have a budget that can reflect that. And it's, it's important because we're obviously in this economy that goes up and down, and how, how do you budget for things like that when it's good and bad? Well, that's, that's the way we do it. How you get to that point of how much money do we spend on operations is, is a hard question to answer because if you've seen the numbers, our population is growing. We're up to about 105,000 people. We are, there's more land in our city. We've annexed some properties. We have uh, more households, more water taps, and so we see a growth in our city. So the question we have to ask as a council is, what is an appropriate amount of growth? So if we took an X number of dollars last year in total dollars, and I'm talking about property tax in this case, what is the appropriate amount for that to grow? Is it tied to your, um, your population or, or some of those things? So Because as you're growing citywide, I mean area-wise, people-wise, you're going to have to have more police officers. You're going to have to have more uh, trash truck drivers. You're going to have to have more water um, delivery systems. So all those things are connected to your population. So that's how I like to look at it is if you're growing at a certain rate, then it's okay to, to grow your total expenditures that way. And, and that's just a, a way you can look at it. I'm saying it's perfect, but it, it seems to make some sense that if your total number last year was, was X, and we've grown 2%, maybe it's X times, or it's 102% of X. Then you look at your valuations, and if you take your total valuations, and then you can figure out your tax rate from that. And, and as a council, we've been very fiscally responsible, in my opinion, because we keep dropping our tax rate and keeping that total amount of money that we're bringing in relatively the same. The, the difference is going to be sales taxes, so you have to think about them in a little bit different way. But it's been, it's been successful, and I see no reason for us to change that whole mode of oper that that whole way of doing things now I, I mentioned this up and down economy thing and it's obvious that we've talked about economic development and we have tried to solve it and i'd say we've had some great successes it's been a little bit of a challenge because it's a catch-22 or a conundrum because you have um well we've had a good economy right so we have low the lowest unemployment in the state you have low housing so how do you get employee, uh, companies come in here and hire people when they don't have houses to live in or, or employees to work for them? So it's difficult. So now you, and then you go into the next cycle or the different cycle that, well, the economy's not any good. Well, no one's expanding. So, so it's a, it's a catch 22 and, and it's a difficult thing to, to resolve. We've talked about one of the ways to do it is to find projects that will satisfy or help our citizens. In, in other words, decrease our our uh, dependence on tax dollars and using more economic development funds for that type of project at the same time diversifying into your economy and how we do it is still remains to be seen but it, it makes sense to me that if we work toward diversification if the model of just writing a check to a company 
and bring them to Midland is not working. Let's find something else to do. And we are hearing from other economic development groups throughout the, uh, throughout the country or throughout the state of Texas are saying that the model is different today and you've got to got to think out of the box a little bit. So we are looking at things that, that we haven't really looked at in the past. And I'd, I'd encourage you to get, get involved a little bit in that because we have a standard that says we're going to be batting a thousand and that's not realistic in economic development. And so we have to find out those things that those projects, those companies that will be successful here and then try to help them do that at the same time diversify our economy and then providing service for our citizens. So it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy solution. The next one that we're dealing with is oil and gas wells. And it's something that I've been in lots of, not a bunch of meetings, but quite a few, and I'll always start with this question if they're wanting to talk specifically about oil and gas wells, is do you want oil and gas wells in our town? And pretty much the whole room will raise their hand. And then I'll ask the same question, do you want this oil and gas well in your backyard? And not as many hands go up. Some people do, some people don't. And that's the dilemma that we find ourselves, that we recognize that in an oil and gas community, completely dependent on oil and gas, there is this desire to, to be kind to the industry. And how, it seems two-faced to say, oh, we're in the oil and gas business, we don't want any oil wells in our town. So that's what we're trying to, to, to resolve and rectify is how we balance it. We've got a great task force that's been working, how many months, John? Is it almost a year now? No, about that, or six months? Yeah, about six months. John's on the committee. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But uh, they were about to give us some recommendations on what we can do as a community. Different cities have struggled with this, and I've thought that if any community can figure this out, it'd be Midland, Texas. And, and this task force is comprised of real estate developers, some realtors, some oil and gas experts, so folks that really care about Midland and understand their particular expertise. So it's, it's, it's going to be a solution that I'm sure we'll be able to solve. And it really shows how the council was, was struggling with this. And, and if you read any of these other cities that are dealing with it, anytime this happens, you have these huge turnouts in your, in your council meetings. And so we've experienced some of that. And we've decided that let's, let's get some experts involved, let them get into it, dig into it and then make some recommendations. So I'm, I'm excited that we're going to get that one running the ground pretty quickly. Everybody asked me about water. Are we going to have water? How long? And I'd say the short answer is yes, we'll have water, and it will be a more expensive. Uh, it's, it's just a fact of life. So part of what we have to do as a community is recognize this as a finite resource, similar to one gas, but more valuable, and that we will have to change some of our patterns. If you uh, and, it, and it's starting to happen. I, I, I have heard of people that are planting in, planting um, yards that don't require much water, and so so we're thinking about it a little bit differently, and we have to go down that path. I would love to take credit for this, but this has really been uh, folks before me that that planned for this, and they did a great job securing water resources. We have two water well fields. Uh, one's north of town. One is far east of here, west of here, excuse me, in Winkler County, T-Bar Ranch. We buy a lot of water for, from a CRMWD. Uh, all the lakes, Lake Ivy and different lakes are, are piped in here. So we've got good water resources today. We have long-term options, and that would be use, or building a pipeline, if you will, to T-Bar Ranch. That's a solution. And another thing that we're looking at, haven't tried it yet, but we're going to start looking at that a little bit closer, is this idea of using brackish water or brine, which is underground water, and then filtering it, turning it into fresh water. If, if you look at countries in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia is one particular, they're taking salt water and turning it into fresh water. You can do it. It's very expensive. It's, it takes a lot of energy, and so we're not quite ready to take, tackle that, but as time goes on, that technology will get better, and it will be something that we will uh, deal with in the future, I'm sure. So that's, that's something that... Um, I think we have to, as a community, recognize our water is a very, very valuable resource, and we have to use it that way. And no question, if you look at our usage, water is mostly used in the summertime, and we're watering our grass and our trees and so forth, which is nice, but we have to be recognizing that it's, it's expensive, and we, we just need to be good stewards of that more than anything else. The, uh, I get this question a lot about crime in Midland. Are we safer than we were last year? The short answer is yes. If you look at the statistics on part one crime, and we'll have a, a report coming out tomorrow about that, um, you know, the numbers are down. We're doing better. 
But if you look at it individually, and I talked to Price about this a little bit easier, uh, earlier, Price Robinson, our chief, that there are certain things that we aren't doing very good in. And again, this is a reflection of our community, and, it, and it, it's upsetting as mayor to see things that, that are like that because we, we, I, I, I can't understand it. It's one of those issues that you say, why do people do that to each other? I, I just can't figure it out. It's frustrating, but I don't think it's necessarily, I know it's not the police department's fault. I don't know whose fault it is, except as a community, we are not reaching out enough to help that. And, and again, I know a lot of you in the room, I'm looking around and seeing how much you're involved in that particular area, and I appreciate what you do. And we need feedback on how we can do better because n none of us want our community less safe than it was last year. I mean, that's a simple thing to understand, but how you do it is, is difficult and you have different opinions. And so we rely on you and, and obviously the experts that in the police department and so forth to help us. But that's, that's critical for our community. And it's not only just, oh, hire people to do that, it's us getting involved in some way. So I just, that, that's one of those things that we are constantly have to be working on and we all have to be involved in it. One of the next, I'll, and I'm getting ready to, to, to move on to the best part, the question and answers, but the last one I'd like to address is this funding with the sports complex. That's been a little bit of a, a question. And what we're trying to do there, and I'll try to make it simple, is the way that was originally put together is in 2000, we borrowed the money to build the sports complex with bonds, and they were to be paid off in 2030. Over the years, our sales tax have increased, and we've had a, a very good uh, accounting staff that figured out, let's refinance that debt. So today, it can be paid, paid off in 2016. So it's, we've already cut off 14 years of payments that we would have made. And then on top of that, we've got $7 million, I think, plus or minus in, our, on, in that account. So what do we use that money for? And the question is, can you use it for capital? Yeah, if you want to replace chairs out there, like right now there are chairs in both complexes that need to be replaced. I'll just give you some numbers. It's, it would, to do it today would cost about a million dollars. If really the only thing's broken with them are the chair, are the, the, the um, arm, excuse me. And those only cost $100,000. But that is a maintenance item and not a capital item. And because of the way the, the issue was, we can't use it. So as stewards, we're going, that doesn't make any sense. Why would we spend a million dollars when we could spend 100000 to fix the problem? That's what we're struggling with. So a couple of weeks ago, we passed, um, and we haven't got this finished yet. It's just starting. But, but we're saying, let's be able to use some of that money for maintenance and not operation. So we can't pay for utilities, we can't pay for mowing the grass, but we can replace arms on chairs instead of buying new chairs. And it's, it makes perfect sense to me, but we really wanted to have feedback from the community that is this the best thing? Now let's fast forward here and look at what does it look like in 2016? This, this um, sales tax will expire, it, it's over. It, doesn't, it won't continue any longer after that. Once those debts, once the debt is paid off, it's over. If you have money in that account that I mentioned, we have seven million today and we project at, at really not increasing sales tax numbers, we'll have enough money in that account, probably the same amount of money having paid for these maintenance items and, and all those things that, that we anticipate, plus pay the interest and debt off. Even prior to that, well, that money would end up going to the general fund. So that's something that, that the citizens in 2016 or, or around that will have to uh, make a decision. But I just wanted to be clear, it goes away. That it, it, It's something that in the short term we will, and, and again, this hasn't been passed, it hasn't been finished, but that's the whole issue is can we use some of that money for maintenance? And that's really what we're talking about. All right, let me uh, move on to the best part. This is the part where I really want to hear from you, and I, we've got plenty of council members here, so they're going to be listening as well. They, they look forward. I, don't, I wouldn't say this is a town hall meeting, but that's the way I would like to think about it because different people have different perspectives, and we're able, this is a good way to get that out. There is a, a microphone. If you're really bold and want to come up here and talk on the microphone, you're more than welcome to. If um, you want to write on, the, on a card on your uh, table, that'd be perfectly okay. If you just want to stand up and raise your hand, that's perfectly fine, and I'll just repeat the question and hopefully repeat it if I repeat it wrong, please let me know. Sometimes I'll do that. But that way I, we can hear from you. And it doesn't have to be a question. 
as much as, you know, what do you think about some of these issues that we're dealing with, oil and gas wells or, or funding or economic development or th those types of issues that we're facing in the community. It's, um, it, we can always look back, but I want to try to look forward and look at what are we going to do now and, and what can we plan for in the future. So if anyone wants to start that off, I'd love to, love to take some questions or comments from you. What, what uh, Becky was talking about is the stimulus package and how should Midland be involved in that. And what uh, I'll, re I'll try to rephrase it in her words, but in my words, what she said, but that we need to be good stewards by getting some of the money we send to Washington back. So knowing those priorities, those things that are important, that, are, that will work for Midland, uh, I sure appreciate your comments. Because there's another side to that, you know, we, we um, and so I, I appreciate very much, Becky. Thank you. Yeah, she's asking about street lights and why they're out, and I don't know why they're out. I, I get lots of calls like what you're what you're talking about, and all I know is we can just turn it in and keep after them. So until they block your number, keep doing it. <laughs> uh, there's also a place on your website you report, and, and I know it, and it is frustrating. Um, you know, one of the things we do a lot are, are potholes. Those basic things, I was at a deal last week and I said, I want to know every single pothole that we've got a problem with in the this, in this city. I want to put a stack together and let's make those priority and get them done. And I'd say the same thing with, with lights out. If, if, um, if we can't do that, I mean, I don't know, it's so simple. If we can't do that, then why are we doing this other stuff? So um, I suppose the best thing I can suggest for you to do, Rachel, is give me a list of all those, and I'll meet with Encore. And I don't know, Sue, are you even here? I hadn't seen her. Oh, there she is. Yeah, you need to hook up with her. But I, I know they're doing their best, I'm, and I'm not throwing stones at Encore. I'm sorry. But the point is, is that we just need to, to do those things better, and I will do whatever I can. And yeah, if you've got your pothole list, give those to me too. <laughs> Yeah, he, Gary asked, he's with the newspaper, which I hate it when he raises his hand, though. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Gary, he's a great person. <laughs> That's going to come back to bite me. <laughs> no, he asked the question, why are we just now hearing about maintenance items at the, at the uh, sports complex? And the, and the short answer is, I really don't know. We, we had a... Uh, board that was we thought we're looking at it they thought we were looking at it and tr quite honestly neither one of us were looking at that close and and as we started to it and, and I'd say this is a place I mentioned earlier about being efficient that's a place that I think we have not been very efficient with we I don't know that we're doing a perfect job there but I'm committed to you to say we're gonna get that figured out uh, at our last council meeting John James put it, put it really well where he says there's two-thirds of the equation we've got to work on it's the income and it's the expenses and I, I don't know why we haven't done this until just now but we're, we're addressing it and we're going to solve that and, and we're going to have a meeting in March I think it's the 9th with the Economic Development Board the Sports Complex Board and the City Council to talk about that and, and how can we be better stewards and be more efficient with that and hopefully and, and I really want you to hold me accountable to this in six months. Ask me, are we doing better than we've done? And, and I can't really speak to the past because I can't give you a real good answer. It just wasn't looked at, which is terrible. I, it's embarrassing, really, to say, I didn't know. But truly, we didn't. And once we started finding out about it, we decided, okay, let's, let's tackle this and do the best we can and try to, try to be better stewards. But it's a, it is a great question, and, it, and it's a question that that we need to ask, and, and I truly am standing here asking you to, to make me responsible, say, you know, how, how are you doing better with that? Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Yeah, Joe uh, is, a, is a stockbroker, so he's really com comfortable with bonds and ratings and those kind of things, but the, um, the city 
has uh, every couple of years will put together a bond package of capital items and this year it's going to be the uh, Garfield Road extension and La Mesa Road and some of those big ticket items and we have every two years in other words we're borrowing money to pay this off well our city is doing so well we have this good fund balance good savings account and our bond ratings increase so we're able to borrow money as a community at really really low interest rates 3.4 percent or something so it's it's a good deal so what we do is we borrowed money say 20 years ago that paid off this year and so now we're borrowing a little bit more to do the capital items that will carry us for 20 years so you have this rolling average and typically the city of midland doesn't increase its overall debt service now in a general obligation setting we do borrow money like you you've just seen recently we did this water big water project it's a new water tower a new uh, purification or work at the purification plant those things are coming out of a water department bond and it's funded by just water so it's not a, a general obligation coming to our taxes so I could say that the tax obligation for our city that that, are, that we are responsible for as taxpayers is, is everything, but they're split up a little bit where those capital items that are not directly connected with a project with a particular fund, be it sewer fund, water fund, that type of thing, but it's more for overall type projects, we're doing good. You mentioned the the hospital and the school. I, I don't know enough about the school, but I have been through the hospital and it needs to be done i i'm i i don't know that 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 will pass but i can just tell you i've seen it and we need to do that as a community and i'm impressed that the ros grover is, is an amazing woman she can raise money from anybody and, and for any amount she's a she's a great woman but has already raised a lot of money from the private sector and now that it's going to be time for the public to step up but personally i think it's something we have to have as a community if, if we don't invest in that we're going to have trouble attracting doctors and if you have a heart attack heaven forbid you go to the hospital and you can't be worked on because there's not not enough room now ultimately that's a decision that the citizens need to make but i just think it's something we need as a community and and, and that's a good thing that points to how we work as a community because we have these meetings with the school board with the with the hospital with the county us and we're talking about what are those most important things our community needs it's not what does the city need what does the hospital need but it's what does this entire community need and recognizing that when the hospital borrows money all of us as taxpayers are going to have to pay that back and so we can't be competing in, in trying to say oh it's our turn or our, our and, and i've really been strong about trying to find out those projects that are most important for our community and ultimately it'll stand on its own i can't say that it's it's something that will pass but I do believe it's something important. And, and as a result, this idea back to the basics, if we're focusing on those types of things, it does give the rest of the community opportunities to do the things they need to be doing. So if we're, if we're doing our good job, being as good a steward as we possibly can, that ultimately translates to a lower tax rate for all the entities, and it, and it just helps us all. So I don't know if that, does that help you, Joe? Okay. That's a, that's a very difficult question. What are we doing as a council? I'd say the, the maybe the cop-out answer to you, Mitchell, is we're trying to give as much resources to the police department that we can to give them the tools they need to do it. If, if it's not working, and, and I'm not saying that it is, then we need to do something different. You brought up this idea of the, of the um, failure to supervise ordinance, which is, which is a good idea. It's something that we haven't seen work in a lot of places, so I don't know if that's the solution. But to say that, oh, it's no big deal is, is the wrong answer. And I don't know how you solve the problem because it, it's, it really speaks to a deeper question. You know, why do we let our kids drink in the first place underage? Or, or, and and that, those are those things that bother me as a person because I can't imagine. And I, I'm not saying all kids are perfect. I wasn't a perfect child by any stretch of the imagination. But the point is, how, how is our... What is our culture that we say that's okay? And, and I don't know how to solve it. I, I, I wish it were an easy thing. I could wave a magic wand or put in an ordinance that all of a sudden that would stop. But I, I don't know.
I'll repeat it. Yeah, she, she asked a great question about downtown. And we're uh, remodeling Centennial Plaza, which I'm real excited about doing. And we've been able to use some hotel motel tax funds and very little property taxes. So we're excited about getting that done. It's definitely a quality of life issue. I call that one of those wants and not necessarily a need. But it's something that we're able to fund outside of taxpayer dollars. So, so that's a good thing. The... Um, there, there's this move from downtown to other venues, as Annabelle's, they're real involved in the, in the Mextex uh, cook-off, and they're having struggles with how to do it. And so we have to solve it. If we build something really nice and can't, and we charge so much, we can't get people to use it, it makes no sense. And that's some of the, the problem we've got at the sports complex. We, we've got utility bills and some of those kind of things. So we need some really good feedback on that because if we, charge so much for anything, sports complex, downtown, all those things that people aren't using it, then we've got a problem. What that does, it increases your operating costs. It, it's real simple. And if, if they stand on their own and they don't generate any income, you know, it just doesn't work that way. So it's, it's the only thing we can do is we're going to get this thing repaired and built and really be nice, something our whole community be proud of. And we will start looking at that. And, and perhaps it'll be come out in this March 9th meeting when we have this joint group of for uh, the sports complex and the, the economic development and the city council to talk about that because we can't be competing with ourselves and, and really rely on you to tell us that, to say, you know, you guys are charging so much, we can't have it there anymore because that your event is the biggest event downtown, I, I think. It might be, isn't it? I'm trying to remember if the um, September Fest is bigger, but it's a huge event. And to chase you off because it's too expensive makes no sense whatsoever. So I can't tell you short term exactly what we'll do, but we want to have that feedback to make sure that we, we do keep you as a customer. And it's an extension of Midland Center, so we will we'll have to work with Iris and figure out how to do that. So does that help you? I don't know. It doesn't really answer your question because I don't have exactly the answer, but I know that we can't chase you out of downtown. We want you downtown, so if, if we can't continue to do that, then we've really made a big mistake. But you can't use the, down, the Centennial Plaza the way it is either, so that's the first step. Bob asked, this is Bob Garcia asked, is how has the slowdown of the economy affected our, our uh, businesses? At this point, we haven't seen any impact. It's, it's crazy to me that we haven't, but we haven't. I mean, if, if you look at the empirical data, it says we had not slowed down. I don't believe that's going to stay. You know, I've talked to my friend uh, John Hood, and they, he works for a big company, and he was explaining to me that they have these rigs that are coming in from the yard, and they may have four workers, and three of those workers aren't working today or not working as many hours as they used to. So that's got to have some impact on our economy. It, it's just a... It's just a matter of time. And I think we'll see it in prop, excuse me, in sales taxes and not necessarily in property taxes. Realtor friends are saying that the houses on our markets are staying about the same. They just are on the market a little bit longer. So that'll directly tie to property taxes. Now, if this thing lasts for a, period of, a long period of time, and I can't tell you what that looks like, but we all have recognized that $140 oil will not last. It, it's not sustainable for... Midland or for the entire world for that matter. So it's, it's just inevitable that it had to come down. The question is how long will it stay here? And, and if it stays a long time, yes, it will have an impact. So when, when I mentioned this plan for the worst, hope for the best, that's, a, that's in our scenarios. We will say, okay, is this capital project totally dependent on sales taxes? And if it is, and the sales taxes go down, can we do it? And it might be an option. We may say, okay, we have to do this one, but this one's an option based on what sales taxes do. All the things you're seeing built right now are coming from dollars that have been budgeted and taken care of. So, so we, we're, we're in a good shape today. We're, we're not you know, betting on the come, if you will. No, no pun intended with our, with our uh, uh, deal here today. But it's a, it's a situation where we will look at that very closely because it, you can't. You can't live in this type of economy forever. And, and again, I'm hoping and praying it'll be short-lived, but it's really interesting. If you talk to economists, they'll say, oh, we're going to be back to $80 oil in, in June or sometime later this year. If you talk to my partner, Paul, we're going to be here a long time. So 
<laughs> Paul is my partner and, and a, knows a lot about the oil and gas business and thinks about it in a big way, so I always listen to him as far as what his predictions are. But the point is that we have to be good stewards and we have to be thinking about the, those worst case scenarios or we will be in trouble. I was with a friend, an acquaintance I should say, not, not very long ago from Boston, and he was saying they're I think I'm going to get this wrong. I'm terrible about giving you exact numbers, but I think they had a $6 billion budget, $6 billion with a B, and they had a $2 billion deficit that they were going to have to go find that. And I don't know where they get it. They're going to have to lay a bunch of people off, obviously. They may have to go to Washington to get some more money. I don't know. But we don't have that situation in Midland because we've lived through these cycles and understand it, but we have to be good stewards. So thanks, Bob, for, for that. Now, Paul is asking, is there a place to go, or can he get an idea of what our sales tax revenues have been over the years, and what is our total debt? I, I can tell you, and I don't have all the numbers right in front of me, but the city does know it, and you'd have, you know, we, we could do some research and figure out what all the entities have, obviously, but there is, a, there is a, a sheet of paper I can get you from our accounting staff that'll tell you exactly those numbers. And, and we look at it, from that perspective, as well as what needs to be done as a community. And, and one of my examples is this, this um, Garfield Road extension. Right, TxDOT has, has got a match, and they said last year they weren't going to do it, so we kind of gave up. They came back and said, yeah, well, now we want to do it. We don't really have a choice, because if we turn them down and not match it, they'll never build that project and we lose that X number of dollars, how much ever it is. So it's a it's being a good steward with this resource that we have and saying, golly, we don't want to lose that and not get Garfield Road, so we have to come up with it. So sometimes you have those things that come up that are unexpected that you just don't have a choice. Some of them are obviously you've got choices, and that's the that's the being accountable to you and being a good steward for your money is to say, is that a need or is that a want? And it's it's sometimes a fine line. Some people think parks are the most important issue in our town. We've got to build more parks. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. Other people think it's a complete, not necessarily a waste of money, but an, an extra thing. That How can you possibly be doing parks when we need to fill potholes and do those kind of things? So it's, it's, a, it's a balance. And again, that's the kind of questions that we need to be asking. You need to be asking of us saying, is that a need or a want? And then making sure that the decisions we're making is a reflection of your decisions. But I'll get you a sheet of paper with your details on there. Anybody else that wants it, we can do that. And there may, it may actually be on our website. I, I'm not sure, but we can sure get it posted. Again, it's, it's got to be a, um, a decision that our, our citizens make. Is that truly something that we want? But to be a world-class city, I believe we need to have a good hospital. And if we want to have good doctors, they're, I don't know the age of them today, but the average age is probably about my age, which is not young. And so we have to be thinking about that. And these young doctors coming out of college, wanting to go into research facilities or nice hospitals, and they look at your community and see how you think about it. And they look at the hospital, and that tells them what we think about healthcare. So if it's an old 50-year-old hospital that's not very well um, maintained, then they are not going to come here. So I think, it's, I think it is critical, but again, it's not my decision. And I hope that the citizens get out there and know the issues, and take a tour of it, and make, make their own mind up. It'll, it's, it, it's, it's something we often decide on our own, quite honestly. Because it is. It's, it's, is it a need or a want? And that's what we have to figure out. I saw there was one other hand I'm trying to see. I don't want to. I guess we're finished. So, all right. I just want to thank again each one of you for being here. Um, if I've skipped something, if you wake up tonight and think about questions, I'm try, I try to be as accessible as I possibly can to each of you. People come to my office, they call me, they send me emails, they pin me down at the grocery store when I go shopping for Ronnie. So, uh, <laughs> It's, it's sometimes more difficult to go out to eat than it used to be, but I tell you, that's the best thing about being in this position is people know how to find me, and I love that. And, and I depend on you 
to, to get that feedback. Uh, and, and I know the council feels exactly the same way. There are different issues that pop up. Their friends are calling them saying, hey. But that's the way this, this community works. And it's amazing to me how much we can get done because of that attitude. And it, and it really does stem from the, from the grassroots, from you. And I just appreciate each one of you being here. I'll look around and see each one of you and how you're involved in making a difference. It's, it's heartwarming to be aside, beside you and working with you and trying to solve these, these big issues that, that um, we're facing and, and not really saying, you fix this or you fix this. Let's work, to, to work together and fix it. So just blessings to you all. Thank you.